How are you feeling right now? Who we'll go from nine and a half down to nine? Texans on the road, obviously nine point dogs coming up. Four thirty p.m. kickoff. Uh, total in the game forty four. How are you feeling about your Ravens here? I bet the under in the game already. Total down to forty four. Uh, how are you feeling, though, about the side here? Yeah, that's my favorite bet. As soon as I saw the total at 45, I immediately hit the under. This game just feels like 24-13, 24-17 to me. I think the under is the play. This game just has the feels of when the Ravens played at home against Andrew Luck when he was a rookie with the Colts. That game was 24-9. to The Ravens played TJ Yates and the Texans in the divisional yeah. round one year. That was a 20-13 to game. Like, it just feels... Feels like we're getting that same kind of game. Now, what's interesting is Lamar throughout his career in the playoffs has struggled to score points. That has obviously been with Greg Roman as his OC, and he obviously hasn't had the receiving weapons that he has had this year. So that really is what I'm interested in seeing. You know, the Ravens have one of the best offenses in the NFL this year. They scored over 30 points in a bunch of their games, um, and they were humming coming to the playoffs, right? They just scored 56 against Miami. They dropped 33 against San Francisco, scored on like seven straight drives. So their offense was playing really, really good. Um, I, I just I like the under, though, in this game. And a big reason, too, as great as Stroud has been, as great as D'Amico Ryans, Bobby Slowick have been, and, you know, they just dropped 45 on Cleveland. Like, it's still a rookie quarterback and a rookie head coach going on the road at yeah. the end of the day. You know what I mean? And the Ravens' defense is is going to be healthy. Um, you know, Roquan didn't play against the Steelers. He'll be back. Kyle Hamilton missed the Dolphins game. He should be back. Brandon Stevens should be back. Marlon Humphrey didn't practice today. But I would expect Marlon to play. If he doesn't, I, I still think regardless, Brandon Stevens is going to be on Nico Collins, uh, which is what I would prefer to Marlon. But I do like the uh, the 44. I got to say, Ryan, I'm surprised because this line immediately opened at 8.5, went right up to 9.5. Now it's back down to 9. I am a little surprised by that just because of the teaser, yeah. right? I thought, obviously, you keep it at 9.5. The teaser goes to 3.5. You bring it down to 9, then it's at 3. That's why it went up from 8.5 because of the teasers at 2.5. You knew everybody would be on that. Um, so I do think this goes back up to 9.5. The line feels about right. I mean, I could see the Ravens winning by 11. I could see them winning by 8. I could see them winning by 4, by 7, 14. Yeah. I, I just I think the unders the play. As for player props, man, just because we like the under... I feel like you got to look at both field goal kickers. I mean, Justin Tucker, over one and a half field goals. It is minus 130. I would lay that juice. Fairbairn even is plus 135. I think that's good as well. Now, obviously, Houston's probably going to be aggressive. They know that if they want to upset Baltimore, they're going to need to score touchdowns. Um, but I certainly like the Tucker prop. It's tough to know who's going to be the guy for the Ravens to target and props. You know, OBJ has been great, really, the last, like, six, seven games of the regular season, and he's always good in the in the bright lights. So 32.5 for him, I think that's a great bet. Nico Collins, who was awesome for the uh, for the Texans in that game against the Browns, 78.5 feels a little too high. I think I kind of like his under for props. Um, Dalton Schultz would be the guy that I would target. The Ravens, the way you attack them is kind of over the middle of the field. So I think Schultz at 35 and a half could be a good look. Zay Flowers, his receiving numbers are always at 50 and a half. Like, feels about right for Zay. Going to be also interesting to watch what Baltimore does on the ground because yep. they have not rushed Gus as much as you maybe would have thought they would, especially ever since Keaton Mitchell went down. Justice Hill has been kind of a receiving running back for them. He's been great all-purpose. He returns kicks for them as well. And then obviously they just picked up Dalvin Cook too. So like, does he start to get some carries? And they've done a great job of saving Lamar all season, not running him as much for the playoffs. So do they start to kind of unleash him a little bit, especially when you're going up against a Texans team that's already seen you once this year, all the way back in week one? Yeah. Lamar didn't run a whole lot in that game, so do you use Lamar's legs just to give the defense something else to think about? But the props that stick out to me are Tucker over field goals and OBJ over receiving yards. Love the Tucker field goals look, and I'm probably going to be with you on OBJ, and I want to get to the weather here in a second. It's kind of hard to believe, man. Lamar is going to be making his first playoff start since 2020. We have now went four years wow. 
without Lamar Jackson That's in the playoffs. Yeah. Obviously, last year it's Snoop Tyler Huntley, and they should have actually won that game if he doesn't try to go full Space Jam in the red zone and lose the fumble. Uh, started to bring up bad memories. Yeah. This Texans team, though, and like you said, so we had this matchup week one. This is a completely different Houston team. Oh, you yeah. know, C.J. Stroud was making his first start. Will Anderson was making his first start in the pros. Now, you know, these guys are pretty much vets. But they kind of remind me, Houston, this year, a little bit of the Bengals, the Super Bowl run that they had. Now, right, Joe Burrow wasn't a rookie, but that yeah. was really his first year because he played like six games as a rookie before his knee blew up. But, man, I mean, the down-to-down, -down, the standard down stuff, I, I think Baltimore is going to be able to hold their own. Are they going to be able to hit explosive plays? Because I thought that was going to be a bad matchup against Cleveland. Like, first half, C.J. Stroud hitting those throws made sense. I thought just going into the half, man, especially if you have a veteran defensive coordinator like Jim Schwartz, that they were going to make the right adjustments, and Stroud struggled against man coverage. But, uh, yeah, he didn't skip a beat. He didn't even finish the game. He didn't have to play in the fourth quarter pretty much of that game. But I don't know against Houston and this defense. Like, the Ravens' defense this season, I know not everybody loves the EPA stuff, but they're six in EPA per play. If you look the last 10 years, like, that's the best defense the past decade. And they have pass rushers. They could get after the quarterback. I like the secondary. I love Kyle Hamilton, especially the way that they could use him as, like, the ultimate chess piece. Love him. Patrick Queen's had a big year, especially yep. because it's a contract year. I like the Roquan pickup. we got to look what the injury report is. But also, I think this comes down to the weather, too, because Baltimore is going to be able to run the ball. They're going to be able to limit the possessions. And right now, they're calling for temps in the 15 to 18 degree range. And obviously, you don't have the retractable roof like the... Uh, like the Texans do here. It's going to be cold. It's going to be real cold, man. Yeah, 25 to 30 mile per hour wins. So if CJ Stroud can't push the ball down the field, I like the Ravens even at nine. Back in 2020, it was San Francisco winning that game 37 to 20. Raheem Mostert ran for 220 yards in that game. Jimmy Garoppolo only had to drop back nine times. Crazy. Blew out the Packers. Both teams were 13 and three that season. That was Matt LaFleur's first year as head coach for Green Bay. Mm. Then we saw this two years ago where Green Bay was 13 and three going into this game. San Francisco was a 10 win team. And San Francisco didn't even score an offensive touchdown and still won the game. They had a block punt, they had a block kicked, block kick in the game. And it's just because I think Kyle Shanahan has the advantage over Matt LaFleur. He definitely has the advantage over Joe Barry. I know the defense has been much better the last couple of weeks, although even though Dallas did hang 30-plus on him. Yeah. Um, I think this is a really bad matchup for Green Bay. I know they're going to be a really public play. I like the Niners. I haven't done anything with the total, but I would lean over. There's a prop I really like, but what are your thoughts on this one? It's rare that in Divisional Weekend I like as many sides this week as I do, like really feel good about it. I really like the Niners. I really like a minus 9.5. So our social team here at BetQL for BetQL Daily posted a poll of to viewers and listeners and all that and people on Twitter. If you had to back one underdog this weekend, if you had to take the Texans, the Packers, the Bucks, or the Chiefs, who would you back? And the most popular dog by far was the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, we're screwed. And I'm like, that's all I needed to know. Because, Ryan, here's what happens, okay? We come into the playoffs, and everybody thinks Dallas is going to roll Green Bay. Everybody's like, Dallas is at home. They've won 17 straight. They score a million points. Green Bay is just lucky to be in. A seven seed has never won in Super Wild Card Weekend since they expanded to seven teams. And now Green Bay goes into Dallas, and... Again, Green Bay always dominates Dallas, and it's Dallas in the playoffs. And Jordan Love, who has been playing great the last three weeks of the season, continues to play great. And now we're just going to change everything that we thought about Green Bay, and we're going to take them against San Francisco, who has been steamrolling everybody in the NFC this season when they're fully healthy. So now we, we want to take Green Bay. Like, there's a reason why this line is as high as it is. This is going to be one of those games where people who bet Green Bay plus the points are going to be sitting there four minutes in, and they're going to be like, what have I done? Because we haven't seen San Francisco play in three weeks. We're going to remember how incredible Christian McCaffrey is. George Kittle's probably going to have a buck 50. Debo Samuel's going to be running and receiving. Ayuk's going to be doing his thing. The defense is going to make life miserable for Jordan Love. Like, it's just a bad matchup. And you just mentioned, historically, like, it's just a bad matchup for Green Bay. I don't see anything changing this time around. Now, Green Bay has been great as dogs this season. Beat the Chiefs on Sunday night as touchdown dogs. Won on Thanksgiving against the Lions as touchdown dogs. Just beat Dallas. Like, they're great in this spot, which is going to draw more people to them. But, man, now that we're under the 10, 
love San Francisco. But as I told you, like I really think the play that I kind of like the most is the team total over for the Niners. 29.5, yeah. to me, that's the play. Generally, if you like the over in the game, which I kind of am leaning towards, and you like the favorite, just taking the team total over is the way to go. Man, I mean, as you know, like Joe Barry, it just... I mean, he's going to struggle in this game. Like, I don't think they're going to get much stops. Yeah. I think the Dolphins' offense is a concern. Great. You can score 70 points against the Broncos when they were a disaster earlier in the year. Great. You can put 40 on the Panthers. You can score a bunch on the Giants and the Jets. Awesome. New England, fantastic. You go up against the Ravens, the Chiefs, the Bills, you struggle in those games. So, I can't I can't take the Dolphins seriously. <laughs> They got a lot of they got a lot of things to think about with Tua. I mean, it's a good point though because it wasn't even that they were like one and five, one and six, whatever it was against playoff teams. They were like minus ninety one point differential, they so they score. were getting blown out. I mean, yeah. that Baltimore game, and they had everything to play for in that Baltimore game because they could have still had home field advantage in oh, the number yeah. one seed, and they got absolutely blown out. And yeah, you had a bunch of injuries. You lose Phillips. You lose Bradley Chubb. You lose Van Ginkle. But still, man, I mean, the offensive side of the ball was the issue in this game. They couldn't get the run game going even against Kansas City, and that's their weakness. Tua, 25 yards uh, running, unfortunately, rushing. But after that, it was Raheem Mostert had eight carries only for 33 yards. A-Chan wasn't able to get anything going. Six carries for only nine yards. Yeah. You know, they had an end around with uh, a jet sweep with Jalen Waddell where he had a uh, carry for nine yards, but they couldn't get anything going on the ground. Tua wasn't very good. I don't think Tua is the guy. I actually am. Mo I'm more sold that Mike McDaniel is a good head coach, although the play calls were not great against Kansas City. I'm not sold on Tua. That's fair.